So here I have a shot that I want to roto. I'm going to drag the time marker through time, and you can see it's a handheld camera, and he's moving. This would take a bit of work to do with masking or traditional paint. What I want to do is find a frame where he is best represented, most visible in the frame. Like right around there is pretty good. I don't want to start where he's out of frame, because that's going to be harder to teach Roto Brush what to keep and what to throw away. I want as much of them in the frame as possible. And that's a good starting point right about there. Second, all Roto Brush work takes place in the layer panel. So you need to double click your layer to open up the layer panel. Now you select the brand new Roto Brush tool. It's up here with a little man holding a very large brush. Once you've selected that tool, your cursor now becomes a green cross. This is basically your brush. To resize your brush, hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows and drag to make the brush smaller or bigger. Now you don't need to be precise to start with. I usually start with a fairly large brush when I make my initial strokes. A green circle with a green plus means add this to the foreground, define my foreground. So I'm going to start in his hair and just drag a rough shape down through his body and release. This pink outline is the segmentation boundary. This is the areas that Rotor Brush has auto detected based on that initial stroke you drew. I drew down this left side and you see got a fair amount of the left side of his body. Let's add more area to the right and basically teach Rotor Brush more areas to include in the foreground. Release. Now it's got that area in. Optional but not required is also teaching Rotor Brush what's in the background. To do that, you hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows. The green circle turns to a red circle with a minus sign. And you can make some just some general strokes and say, Rotor Brush, this is background, exclude those. Once you have this very general drawing done, now you need to go in and start doing some detail work to pick up the little bits of reflections and highlights and edges of hair the Rotor Brush might have missed. To do that, you probably want a smaller brush. So I'll hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows go down to a smaller brush size, and now just start stroking in these areas I'd missed. I tend to start in an area the rotor brush has already detected, then drag into my new area to help bridge and teach what's good and how that connects to the areas around it. Pick up this stray piece of his jacket through here and teach rotor brush that area. Now it's important to give rotor brush good information. If you accidentally drag outside and draw a green foreground stroke against the background, you'll see Rotor Brush thinks, well, I have to include that. The best thing to do at this point is to undo and then draw again to make a new stroke. Now, if Rotor Brush didn't get all of your intentions on your first stroke, there's no need to undo that. Just keep adding more strokes until Rotor Brush gets it right. And if Rotor Brush grabs too much area, just hold down Option or Alt and teach it what not to include. It's never bad to give Roto Brush more information, just don't give it wrong information. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I have a mouse with a scroll wheel, so I'll scroll forward to zoom in a little bit further, hold down the space bar to pan around the image, and see how good of an edge I have. I'll go ahead and add some more details here. Teach a little bit more of this jacket to include. There we go. Even though this is a soft edge, Rotor Brush is doing a pretty good job of differentiating between foreground and background. That's not so bad there either. I'm working on the base frame. This is the frame that Rotor Brush is going to use to try to find similar areas before and after it in time. This little gold bar here marks what the base frame is. And you might have noticed this pattern of gray arrows going before and after my base frame. That's how far Rotor Brush is trying to predict my strokes. So it's really important that I get this base frame good. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going around, picking up things like hair around his ears, anything I want to include. If I need a smaller brush, I'll just drag a smaller brush and say include that little area right there. The side of the head's looking pretty good. You are going to have some rough areas around here where your pink outline doesn't exactly match the hair. That's not so bad because you'll be able to really refine these edges with partial transparencies later on. For example, this sharp corner by his ear, uh, we can play around the smoothing parameter later on, but you can still hold Option or Alt 
and say, let's go into that area and help exclude more of it, just to teach Rotobrush more of what's a foreground and what's a background. How's this jacket edge doing? It's looking pretty good. That's looking good. Top of his hair is looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna hold shift and forward slash, recenter my image. Now I have my base frame. Now again, this pink segmentation boundary shows me the line Rotobrush is drawing between the foreground and background. It's toggled on and off with this new button down here in the layer panel called the toggle alpha boundary. When I toggle it off, it actually shows me my object cut out against the background. And this is a pretty good start. Now I wouldn't be too worried about how rough these edges are because we're gonna refine these later on. But we're off to a good start. I'm gonna turn my segmentation boundary back on because it helps me visualize what's going on and see what areas I need to add. It lets me see areas beyond my foreground in case I need to add or subtract them. Okay, now that we have a good base frame, it's time to propagate that base earlier and later in time. Use what I've taught Rotorbrush to go ahead and automatically generate mats for surrounding frames.